Welcome to Korean True Crime. I'm your host, Mimi Mizuko. In today's episode, we will be discussing the murder of a woman who lived in an impregnable fortress. Her murderer is only known as one word, ghost. On November 17th, 2010, a 73-year-old man and his 69-year-old wife woke at the first sign of dawn. Mr. and Mrs. Lee spent the morning together eating breakfast, reading the paper, before Mr. Lee decided to head out to play golf with his friends. A little after 7 o'clock in the morning, Mr. Lee gathered up his golf clubs, he got the car keys, and he decided to head out. He was going to be gone most of the day, so he gave his wife a peck on the cheek and left. Mrs. Lee was on the phone with a family friend at this time, talking about investment in stocks and the current economy in South Korea. Mrs. Lee was incredibly wealthy, as well as her husband. They made their money with great investments and good business opportunities. They also lived in a very exclusive, brand new apartment complex in the city of Namyangju. According to the family friend and her own phone records, Mrs. Lee was on the phone for about 18 minutes. Shortly after ending the call, Mrs. Lee met her own demise, but her husband wouldn't find her until 15 and a half hours later when he returned home from a day of golfing and drinking with his friends. Mr. Lee walked into their bedroom and found his wife laying in their bed. She had been stabbed 10 times in the face and the neck. The bloody disaster left him in a panic, but he was able to call the police. They arrived about 30 minutes later at 11.30 at night. Mrs. Lee was able to put up a fight against her attacker, who wasn't able to easily overpower her, considering the large amount of defensive wounds that were present, meaning that the attacker must have been someone weaker than the 69-year-old woman. Either Mrs. Lee never skipped a leg day, or her attacker was significantly weaker than the average man or woman. Possibly another elderly person, or even a child. So let's analyze the crime scene. Mr. and Mrs. Lee lived on the 15th floor of a brand new apartment building. It's only accessible by the elevator and a stairwell, which are both covered by CCTV. Entrance to the building is a doorman and an electric passcode or key card. The apartment itself showed no signs of forced entry on the windows or the doors, which means it's likely that whoever the attacker was was let into the apartment by Mrs. Lee. This means she either knew the person or she expected them to be at the apartment, like a delivery person or a repairman. The murder weapon was found relatively quickly at the crime scene as a kitchen knife was used for Mrs. Lee's own kitchen and it was returned to its proper place after being created crudely washed off. But even more curious than that, there were no footprints left around the apartment that had blood on them, but the bedroom was quite a mess. They found a drop of blood on the bottom of a pair of bathroom slippers, which suggests that the killer put on the bathroom slippers, killed Mrs. Lee, then returned the bathroom slippers to their proper place. The use of the kitchen knife makes it sound spontaneous, like someone was angered, or a robbery in progress that went wrong. They grabbed whatever they could and killed the old woman. But the use of the bathroom slippers sounds premeditated to me. What do you think? The police had to determine what the motive was, and the most obvious one would be a robbery, their wealth. They lived in a wealthy apartment complex, and they were known billionaires. But nothing of value was taken, and money was still in Mrs. Lee's wallet. There oddly was only one part of the entire apartment that seemed to be messed with, and that was their clothes closet, which had been torn through. But the husband confirmed that nothing was taken, so whatever they were looking for, they didn't find. Of course, the police investigated Mr. Lee as being the attacker, but CCTV at the apartment complex, as well as his cell phone records, were alibi enough for the police to rule him out as a perpetrator. While verifying Mr. Lee's alibi, they did check the CCTV of the building for anyone else on Mrs. Lee's floor or anyone who came into the apartment complex building that wasn't accounted for by the other residents, and they couldn't find anything. No one had asked to be buzzed 
buzzed into the building from Mrs. Lee's number. No one had gone into the apartment because the CCTV showed down the hallway to their apartment door. No one went in or out of the apartment in the 15 and a half hours that Mr. Lee was gone. The police took the raw footage of the CCTV and the data logs of who entered the building to their own forensics team and they were able to confirm that nothing had been filmed over or edited or deleted from the footage or the logs, which means they had to broaden their scope. So they looked about two weeks before the attack just to see if someone had slipped into the building, got into the apartment, and had hid there until the right moment to attack Mrs. Lee. That's not even the most terrifying of the ideas about what happened in the apartment. The residents in the building began calling her killer a ghost, and they said that the basement was haunted. A ghost came up from the basement and killed Mrs. Lee. There is only one area in the building that didn't have CCTV coverage, and that was the second and third floors of the building, which hadn't been rented out to anyone yet. In South Korea, landlords can purchase individual floors of a building and rent out the apartments on those floors, and the landlord who owned those two floors hadn't started renting out those apartments. Now, the CCTV of all of the other floors was functional at both the stairwells and the elevator, so it's highly unlikely that the killer had snuck in through those floors and made his way or her way up through the building. But the police did investigate the possibility that the killer had hid on those floors in one of the vacant apartments. Of the apartments that had residents, the police investigated all 48 of them. They took samples from everyone's shoes just to see if there were traces of blood. They also checked clothes for blood stains and they interviewed all of the residents in the apartment complex. But unfortunately, nothing would come back as positive and none of the interviews would lead to any clues as to who the killer was. Some of the more superstitious residents of the building kept talking about the demon that lived in the basement or the ghost that came and killed Mrs. Lee, and they were scared for their own lives. But the police reassured them that they had checked the basement and there's no possibility that someone could have been living there. But I don't think that eased their minds. One of the interviews was fruitful, however. A tenant had mentioned overhearing an argument on the rooftop between Mrs. Lee and another resident of the building. The resident was a angry because Mrs. Lee was drying peppers too close to the clothes that this resident was trying to dry, and they didn't like that. The eavesdropper said that they heard the other resident using some unkind words, but the altercation wasn't physical. The police immediately got a warrant to take the woman in and also take all the carpeting, shoes, and clothes from her apartment to test them for blood. The woman was subjected to an interrogation and a lie detector test, and the police ultimately decided that she wasn't the attacker. It's unknown whether or not they were able to prove an alibi for her, but they didn't find any evidence in her apartment. As the case began to go cold and the residents continued to tell stories about demons rising up from the basement and slaughtering an elderly woman, journalists and private investigators attempted to recreate the crime to see if they were able to enter the building without the CCTV catching them, but no one was successful and ultimately this case went cold with absolutely no no answers beyond the question, was it a ghost? There is only one possibility that I could think of that fitted the crime and wasn't investigated by the police, and that is the possibility that the wealthy husband took a hit out on his wife, that he hired a professional killer who knew what they were doing, the husband allowed them access, and he had planned to be out of the house that day. So, we're left with a cold case, and the question who done it? Could it have been the angry neighbor who is angry about Mrs. Lee drying peppers on the roof or her husband hiring a killer? Could it have been another neighbor that the police just never suspected or a thief who didn't ultimately end up taking anything? If you have your own theory, let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more true crime content. Let me know if you want me to cover any specific cases in the future. Dame tapayo. See you next time on Korean True Crime with me, your host, Mimi Mizuko.